Now, in the current economic climate, it's no surprise that many South Africans are resorting to selling their properties, but the process of selling is not an easy one, and you may find yourself asking, why is my property not selling? But shouldn't ordinary South Africans use the current climate to perhaps start investing and make some extra income? Joining me now to unpack all these questions and more is Andrew Walker, who's the CEO of SA Property Investment Investor Network. Thank you very much for your time this evening. It's a pleasure. Let's start with what we're seeing in terms of trend in private property. Are we seeing South Africans resorting to selling uh, their property in the current climate? Yes, they are. With, with everything that's happening in South Africa, what we're finding is a lot of uns uncertainty. What I mean by that is, you know how we talk about a property ladder, how people climb the property ladder? What we're seeing is people are starting to downsize. They don't want to go buy that four, five million rand property. They, they'd rather hang, hang fire and say, you know what, let's rather wait it out. Let's see what's going to happen or let's sell the big property now whilst we can and maybe rent for a few years. That's what we're seeing in the marketplace. And those that choose to sell, it's a very difficult process. Um, and and I think there's a whole host of processes here sure. that aren't very clear for the consumer sure. and of course some agents not very helpful. It's very difficult for the uneducated people and that's why the SA Property Investors Network exists because we educate people how to buy and sell properties. Selling a property is actually very easy if you're working with the right estate agent. Where people are going wrong is that they do not know how to value their property. They thumb suck. They get emotional. They say, I've spent all this money on my property. I think it's worth $3 million. In fact, it's worth $2.2 million. The estate agents come along. They list the property for what the seller wants. And guess what? It doesn't sell because the, because the seller thinks their property is worth more than what it's actually worth. Mm -hmm. And once you understand the process, once you start watching our free webinars, the podcast, coming to the national events, that's when you start learning and realizing, actually, it's not as difficult as one thinks. Mm. And then if we're not selling, which I think is an opportune time to perhaps start yes. buying in the current climate, are we seeing lower prices? What are we seeing Absolutely. in terms of price ranges of properties at the moment? Absolutely. Very good question. Now is the time to buy. This is definitely a buyer's market. There's a lot of buyers out there. There's a lot of money being lent and a lot of deals happening, but only in certain price brackets. You see, if you're playing in the price bracket of you know, zero to, to about 1.5 million, we're making a lot, a, a, a lot of money. A lot of deals are happening. But as soon as we start playing in the, in the region of your 3 million rands or your 3.5 or your 4 million, even going up to your 5 million, at that price range, properties are sticking. Sellers are having to drop their uh, property prices. However, like I said, below the 1.5 million, there's specialist lenders in that market. You know, strategies like students' accommodation, multi-lets. There's a lot of money to be made. So now is the time to, to start investing. And I know a lot of people will be watching this interview, and you've just mentioned it briefly there in terms yes. of special lending opportunities. An sure. ordinary South African sitting, boy, I'd like to make some extra money, but I really don't know that I can afford to. Sure. What are the options that are available? No, absolutely. You know, there's, there's certain institutions out there like the Housing Investment Partners and FLISP and all these different lenders that the general public don't know about. These are lenders that are helping people get onto the property ladder or helping them get their first investment property. The problem is that the general public needs to get educated. They, they need a go-to company to find out where these people are. Because if you think about the average South African, if we can help the average South African just invest in two properties or three properties that helps them generate an additional income of 10 to 15,000 rand a month, that'll ch change tens of thousands of lives, but they need to get the education first as to how to do it. Because like you said, most people think it's difficult. Mm. I'd say it's easy, <laughs> but it's only easy because I've had the education. If that makes sense? No, yeah, that's <laughs> right, that's right. And then Absolutely. of course, when I am going out to then buy a property, yes. what exactly should I be looking at in terms of getting real value for my money? Sure. So the first thing, in terms of real value for the money, we need to identify, there's two things I want you to think about. I want you to think about when we go out and buy a property, what's the true market value. Let's start looking at what's the value of the property and can we negotiate on the price? Can we buy it below the market value? Can we buy the property with equity? That's the first thing I want you to think about. And, but the first thing is you need to understand or you need to learn or you need to know how to identify what the market value is. The second thing is we need to be buying what we call positive cash flow properties. In my personal opinion, I don't go out there, buy a bar to let, which is the property where I'm going to put a tenant in. The tenant's going to pay me rent, right? I don't, at the end of the month, want to have 
I, I don't want to take my personal money and put it back into the property. I want to make sure in terms of value for money that when I rent a property out, that the rent that comes in covers all the expenses, including maintenance, including voids, and I make a profit at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. So when we go out there and we start you know, educating our, our investors, we start looking at student accommodation, multi lets small blocks of flats. For the, for the startup investor, maybe that we help them buy their first one-bed flat, but a positive cash flowing property. Once we've ticked those two boxes, because along with that, can I ask you a question? Have you heard of the APSA Bank product? No. So APSA Bank have the biggest market share in South Africa with property investors. If you out there and you own two properties, and most people don't know this, APSA Bank have what's called the future rental product, which allows if the affordability from the banks, if they say, sorry, but your affordability, you can't buy the third property, APSA Bank now have a product out there to help that investor get that third property because they use future rental income. So there's all these type of awesome incentive, uh, incentives for the, for the average investor. Very interesting insights. You make it sound very easy, Andrew, and it can be an alternative uh, form of income for struggling South Africans. That was Andrew Walker, who's